All right, folks. Welcome back. Welcome back. Uh, so up to this point, I've been calling this place the property. It's the property. It sounds so impersonal, so uncool. And uh, a little while back, <clears throat> when we got the area up there cleared, we saved this hemlock right here on the hill. And uh, we kind of talked about it. We were like, man, Hemlock Hill. It's got a nice ring to it. There's that hemlock there and then the whole backside, right? All of that there on the hill and then the little valley down there that goes into the creek. It's all hemlocks. So uh, I think we're gonna go with Hemlock Hill. The Bateman property. Previously known as the property. Shall henceforth be known as Hemlock Hill. I think I like it. Uh, today's activities are going to be, I got to work on the sawmill bed. I'll show you a little bit more about that here in a minute. Uh, can work on re-leveling it and then um, take you back here. Give me just a moment. And between today and tomorrow, so today is Sunday and I've got tomorrow off, so it's Sunday and Monday. Uh, I'd like to get the rest of these logs milled up if I can. I'm going to try a little bit of a different video style, if you will, this time. So uh, I'm going to kind of go through some descriptions for each log before and then kind of what the final dimensions are. Um, and like I said, previous videos, uh, really all I'm trying to do is make the largest possible cant or square timber as I can out of each log and then that way I can go more easily assess what I have in total. So uh, that's the goal for today and uh, I'm going to go ahead and grab my level so I can work on re-leveling that bed and then we'll get the saw milling once the tractor gets warm. All right we're back. I was able to get the uh, sawmill kind of sorted out so uh, in a few of the videos, you may or may not have noticed that the sawmill bed was sliding off of the, the uh, brick caps, uh, cinder block caps that I have down there for like their kind of base and foundation. Uh, and it would slip off and I would just put it back on there. Uh, I checked it once or twice and it was like, okay. Uh, and then one of the more recent times I um, pushed the saw bed off. I didn't check it and uh, it had gotten itself out of whack so those cinder blocks had moved a couple of supports bent just a little bit uh and a little bit is all that it really takes so what i end am ending up with is let me turn you around what i have ended up with i should say is uh down here at one end about 14 and an eighth inch down here at the other end about 14 and an eighth inch, but here in the middle, the rails were a little high, and now I have 13 and seven eighths. So, uh, so to try to explain what was happening is the center of the bed there was high compared to the ends here and here. So with the center of the bed being high, as the sawmill head pushed through the log, it rode up the rails and then back down the rails, creating a hollow in the middle. Uh, so can't be having a hollow in the middle. I need these to be kind of straight as possible. Uh, good thing I was cutting those oversized, but uh, so yeah, I just re-leveled the bed. Now it's like perfectly flat again, and I'll show you what I did to remedy that situation. Uh, for the time being, I put these two foot long concrete stakes that I had from doing the footers in the house, and I put them here up against the saw bed. One, two, three, four down there, and then, yeah, just those four. And uh, I only need it to prevent it from pushing 
towards me as I'm standing here because that's the side that the logs are loaded from. So when it lands on the bed, it hits the forks. As I'm rolling them, all the movement is pushing it this way. Uh, so these have been in place now for for a week and some change. Uh, when Brian and his father were here last weekend, we put those in. We did a lot of work out here and uh, they worked really well. So uh, pretty confident that that's gonna be a good fix for the time being. I do have plans to put like a raised platform here to get the sawmill onto like a wooden platform that will stay level, nice and level, and then put a roof over the top of it so I don't have to keep covering it with a tarp. But um, that's kind of future plans. I need to build a house first. So let me show you what I've got on deck first. I've got a nice, uh, I think this was 19 feet, 19 feet of hard maple here. Uh, this is this log is actually exactly the reason that I'm kind of changing my tactic. You can see that it's like kind of straight there for about six feet and then it's got this hoop and then goes straight down there. So um, I couldn't really tell 100% what I'm going to be able to get out of it because of this part here. So I just did some measurements on the short end or the narrow small end which is as big as you're going to be able to get. It's about 15 inches inside the mark. So my experience, I'm going to lose about 4 inches. So the largest timber I'll be able to get out of this uh, possible is 15 minus 4 will be 11 inches. That's fine. I need 10 by 10s, so I can try to make this an 11 by 11. And uh, if that works, then cool. And then I think I'll be able to cut back into like here and get my full 10 by 10. So that is 10 feet. So I'm going to cut this with my chainsaw right there at 10 feet. And I'm going to load this part on the bed. And then we'll talk some more. All right. The log is loaded up, clamped into place, ready to rock and roll. This is a pretty kind of straight-ish section. It does still kind of roll, so I got the crown facing up, cut top of the banana, if you will. And uh, so I was 15 inches in diameter, and I'm going to cut at 13 and a half inches. So that's my scale from the bottom. So that's where the deck is there. So I'm 13 and a half inches off the deck. Blade is there. I'm gonna make this first cut. I like to kind of, again, I'm trying to maximize yield here. So I'm gonna do multiple passes until I get to a point where I'm ready to flip it over. and a half inch cut I'm gonna go ahead and roll this because uh, that looks pretty decent and then I'll cut the other side and then we'll get ready to make our our squaring cuts see what we end up with and if we've got to do any more cutting I think this is going to turn out better than I had expected. And take a look down below and see if my log is sitting flat on all of my bumps here. Oh yeah. I'm a looking and I'm a liking. All right. So with a log this size, really don't 
need to clamp this thing in place. Uh, now that I've got this kind of stabilized in one flat bottom. So, uh, yeah, I'm just gonna go ahead and make this cut. We'll go for the square. gambled and I don't think that I won <laughs> what I've got here is uh, a nice little check that runs in about a foot and a half or so so I still can get an eight foot uh, probably 10 by 10 out of this which will be fine I can use an eight foot I was hoping to get something a little bit bigger but dudes <laughs> look at this man can you imagine having that in your house? That is gonna be like just a cool focal feature. Uh, but then, hmm, that's still pretty solid. We'll see, I might be able to cut that out. Uh, but I'm gonna keep going. I think I can still get an eight foot, uh, 10 by 10 out of this and that's good. I need those. So what I'm gonna do now is roll this up on its side and lock it into the the posts here. Maybe. That wasn't very good. Right. The thing is, these posts are not as 90 degree as one would hope. So if I just lock this in place right now, Tighten it down. Hopefully you can see this okay. Uh, that is, it's pretty good right there. All right. So if I take this and lock it into place, this thing moves quite a bit. Now, kind of got this locked into place against those bump stops, and I am out of 90 by probably three eighths of an inch, maybe a quarter, quarter inch. So I've got to wiggle this till it's 90, and then I'll have a nice square setup. That definitely pulled on me, which is kind of why I wanted to cut it oversized. So this pulled on me a little bit as soon as the blade entered the log. And I am maybe an eighth inch, eighth inch out of square. So that's okay, that's correctable. That's not a problem. I'm gonna go ahead and roll this one more time. This, this is a beautiful timber, my goodness. Whenever you're rolling these things, you want those backstops to be all the way up. So your lock doesn't roll off the bed. I've definitely done numerous times. See how we're looking on our bunks here. It's all nice and flat and open. Sitting pretty. I think what I'll end up doing when I go to cut my final 
final timbers out of all this. I'm gonna have some wedges. And I'm gonna wedge, wedge that up. You know, all these are gonna get planed and uh, run through a planer anyway, so they're gonna end up square. Uh, really, what I'm trying to do is minimize the amount of work that I have to do in the end to get these things ready to be turned into parts of my house. stuff. I got the, didn't take quite enough off on that first pass, so I dropped down another inch. So now I've got an inch board right there. I'll just stack that. Have some nice hardwood, hard maple for future endeavors. What a beautiful log. Pleasantly surprised with this. This is a real nice. Real nice. So, a couple things here. Exactly 12 inches. Inches over here and the middle. I am exactly 12 inches. So I have got my saw corrected. I'm 11 inches there, 11 inches in the middle, and 11 inches at the end. So fantastic news. The saw mill is all straightened out. At least I'm cutting straight lines instead of introducing a cup in each of the boards. So this guy is gonna go get stacked. It's time to grab the next one. All right, friends, this is where we ended up. Uh, so this is the second half of that log. So there's the one we did earlier. The second half of that, which is about nine feet, uh, all said and done, uh, it's like eight and a half feet to there. So I should be able to get an eight footer out of this, which is perfect. It's 11 by 11 and I need a 10 by 10. So I can take an inch off of either side to get rid of uh, what's called the wane, right? So anywhere where the bark or the edge, live edge of the tree used to be, that's still visible in the cant, and the cant is this square piece, right? So some terminology, I guess, is in order. Uh, obviously the log is the round log or timber, uh, and then you turn the round log into a cant, C-A-N-T. The cant is the square piece of whatever dimension you're trying to go for. And then like here, I've got a nice crisp edge where the two ends of the cant meet but over there i've got a little wayne over here i've got a little wayne i'm not sure how to spell wayne uh you can probably go look it up if you want to um but a little bit of wayne down there so then it's a matter of deciding what's acceptable so like looking at this log at some point in the future uh this could be 
one where this part faces the outside of the house. So like the sheathing would be here or here, and this is tucked in the wall. No one will ever see it. It doesn't impact the integrity of the structure whatsoever because a 10 by 10 is way too big for what, like it's, it's more than what's actually needed. I want it because I can put a six by six stud wall in here and then have enough room for the knee braces and the drywall to all fit behind in one sheet and I won't have to do any like funky framing. It's gonna make my life easier. Plus, look at this thing. It's awesome. Big, massive timbers. So, yeah, it's kind of where that one ended up. I'm gonna stack that one up, go find another log. I got one, uh, like one and a half inch board there, right there. I'm gonna stack that one too, so. Not a bad haul for that log. Two 10 by 10s. That's pretty good. Better than I was expecting. Two 10 by 10s is much better than I was expecting. So uh, overall, that's a win. Can I also just say how much it sucks that like, it's not freezing. And that might sound counterintuitive to folks in warmer climates, but if you live in a colder climate like this, then you know at this time of year, like underneath of like the top inch, everything is frozen. Uh, but this top inch of mud sliding around on the ice, it's like, it's worse than being on an ice rink or a frozen lake. It's just so slippery and nasty. And the bobcat's just making a mess. It's sliding all over the place. I'm falling all over the place. So uh, next weekend's supposed to be like 25 degrees like nonstop all weekend. And I'm actually looking forward to that because it'll be like concrete out here and there'll be so much more traction and everything will be more stable. And you know what? I can wear gloves and I can wear more clothes. Uh, so for me, uh, colder is definitely preferred to what we have now. And then of course, uh, summer is a little more preferred to all of it because then I could be out here in a tank top soaking in the sun rays and having a good time but it's really not bad I'm enjoying it so let's go ahead and unload this log get rid of this waste material and then get the next one gosh it's slippery windy and nasty next up on deck is 11 feet uh I think I'll, well, yeah, we'll see what this one, this is definitely one of those crazy ones. Uh, hard to, oh wait, let me turn you around. Hard to see on the camera, but this does like this big swoop like this. So the point of contact is right there. I've got my wedge to hold this end up and to try to get a nice even cut and maximize the yield out of this thing. Got a bottle jack over here, so I lifted up this end. So you can kind of see the swoop here. The low spot is right about there. I just measured up. I'm gonna try about 18 and a half or so inches off of the deck. That doesn't mean I'm gonna get anything near 18 inches, right? Because down there I've got like, I don't know, inch, inch and a half gap. So I'll make this cut. If I've got a flat reference, I'll flip it and then make another cut and then evaluate from there. This one's gonna be kinda, I say it'll be tricky. It's just uh, one of those unknowns. And then on this end, the operator end, um, this is where the crotch was, kind of a cool like yin yang thing going on here. Um, but not really good for me. I don't know how far down that goes, right? But I can't have a split like that, so. I'm just looking up here where the tree kind of came together. I'm gonna guess somewhere in here. So this is a, le a little like 11 and a half feet. I'll probably be lucky to get something in the 10 foot range out of this, but we'll cut it and we'll see. if I could ask for much better than that.
Oh, folks, this one. Wow, this one is nice. Very nice indeed. So, the uh, end dimensions here are uh, 14 inch by 13 and 3 quarter inch cant. Uh, I've actually got like 11 and a half feet to that edge, but you can see here, right? Like, I, there's really not much there that I can use, but after cutting into it, uh, not as much of it is going to have to go to waste as I thought. So I got 10 feet to this line. So uh, this could end up being like a 10 by 12 or a 10 by 10, uh, just depending on where the need is, but I do need 10 foot length. So this ended up being a very good log. And actually, if I cut off four inches, uh, there's plenty of other things that I could use that for. Cause there's like four by sixes and stuff in the frame. So uh, this one should provide some pretty useful, pretty useful lumber. Yeah, pretty happy with that one. So go ahead and get this one stacked up. Get rid of that stuff and then we'll get another one. I think uh, <laughs> I'm all out of battery life here. So I'm gonna go ahead and turn off the phone. I got a couple more hours of daylight. I've got this log to finish up. I've got that log to finish up. And then if I've got time, there's another one back there that I'd like to get done today. And then tomorrow there'll be two more and I will have everything done that I want this weekend. So uh, I'll fill you in tomorrow or maybe at the end of the day if there's daylight and I still have battery on where I ended up today. And then, uh, yeah, see how tomorrow goes. Well, folks, as you can see, it's pretty dark. So that's going to be the end of it for tonight. On the plus side, it's about 530. But, let's see, uh, that one's new, that one, that one, that one, and that one. So, five new timbers for one day. Not too shabby. I'm pretty pleased with that. I've got a few new boards in there uh, and something else I want to show you. This thing's pretty cool. So I've got some ideas for this to use maybe on our entryway. We have an entry truss on a gable. So that might be the king post. Uh, yeah, maybe. It might be a little too small. I got to think it over. Possibilities. Have a good evening.